what's up everybody david here back at it again we are in vegas it is monday the vlog is supposed to drop tuesday and once again i have not recorded or edited anything i recorded a little bit but this is going to be the main recording i ain't edited nothing so we'll see if it gets dropped tomorrow uh, i was talking to my homie manny and he was like dude you ever drop filler and i had to really think about it and i was like you know what these vlogs low-key might be the filler if my life was anime so thank you to everyone that watches my filler my day-to-day -day, or i guess week-to-week -week life and just kind of checking up on me but yeah Today, I want to talk about the 11 act story structure by Julie Soule. It's something I learned about in a media writing class I'm in, and I kind of wanted to share to you what I learned about it. I really like it, and I kind of wanted to share what I thought about the movie that I watched regarding this 11 point story structure. The 11 point story structure, it's kind of like a formula to make a hit movie. Just like there's formulas in writing songs to make hits, there's formulas for movies too that allow the character to follow character development, get attached to these characters, care about them, and really care about the outcome and be moved emotionally by these characters. So this, this is the order of the 11 act story structure. There's 11 steps. So the first one are the characters wants, needs, and why. The second step is our hero or the character, our main character, they logically go for whatever goal it is they go for. The third step is the character is denied the opportunity to go for that goal. The fourth step is the character gets a second opportunity at that goal, but there's conflicts in achieving it. You know, there's a little doubt, hesitation. The fifth step is conflicts about da da da. Okay. The sixth step is the character goes for it. They finally get that opportunity, that shot, and they take it. They have the confidence, and they might not have all the confidence, but they're gonna do it anyways, and they're gonna take a shot. The seventh step is everything's going well, everything's winning, but then, tragically, the eighth step comes, and that is when everything falls apart. Uh, step nine is crisis. Step 10 is the climax, and then step 11 is the final conclusion to it all. So it's it's a little confusing, but I'm gonna write it down so you can follow it along and hopefully you could uh, be able to see what's up. I actually might put it in the description. I have it written on a Google Doc and so I might copy and paste it and put it on there so you can check it out and it'll be a little easier to follow along. So let me get back to the movie. <laughs> okay, so the movie that I'm gonna be breaking down, the 11 part story structure act, is the movie Billion Dollar Baby. Now, Billion Dollar Baby is a boxing movie starring uh, Clint Eastwood, Hilary Swank, and Morgan Freeman. And it pretty much follows the character's development as Maggie tries to become a boxing champion. The first part of the story structure are the wants, the needs, and the why. These are very important because these are the things that drive our character's character development and it's their motivation of what pushes them moving forward. So we've got three main characters that we're gonna be talking about today. The first one is Frankie, the second one is Maggie, and the third one is Eddie Scrap, Morgan Freeman's character. The first character we're gonna talk about is Frankie. This is Clint Eastwood's character. And so his wants, needs, and why is he wants to be a father figure through training and he wants to protect his fighters, even though it means he doesn't push them up. In the movie, Frankie's a boxing trainer. He's one of the best, but right when his fighters go to get that championship fight, he'll always be like, oh, one more fight, two more fights. You're almost ready, you're almost ready. And in the beginning, this sets the tone for what his problem is because he has a championship fighter and right off the bat, his main fighter leaves him and he's left fighterless. It's kind of a reoccurring theme that you see throughout the movie is Frankie's unwillingness to let go and lose control and, and let his fighter take that chance to go out on their shield and become a champion. He was too busy protecting them and they kind of fucked him over. Frankie's needs in the movies is the need of relationship. Part of his backstory is that he doesn't have a very good uh, reputation with his daughter. He doesn't have a good reputation uh, with the church that he goes to. He quite often tries to berate the priest and to talk hella shit to him. Finally, is his why. Frankie's why is that, you know, he's getting closer to the end of his life and uh, he has a lot of mental trauma that he's dealing with, but he tries to move forward in the movie. He doesn't have a very good relationship with his daughter, but you see he's constantly trying to send her letters, send her letters, but the letters unfortunately are always returned. And you'll see why that's a big deal as we move forward to our next character, Maggie. Uh, Maggie is the kind of main character, main protagonist in the movie. 
and her dream is to be a boxing champion. She wants to be a champion, but the, there's a couple things working against her. First of all, she's kind of poor. She's kind of old. She doesn't. She's not very skilled to start with. She doesn't have any training, but she has the want, the need, and the desire to do it. She has a real heart for boxing, and she wants to compete. She just needs her shot. So the final character we talk about is Eddie, and this is Morgan Freeman's character. He's not a main character, but he is one of the driving forces and the catalyst behind Maggie beginning to box and Frankie teaching her how to box. Uh, without Eddie, there really wouldn't be anything to kind of push the characters and give them that extra nudge off the ledge they need to move forward in their character development and their story. And so. Uh, besides that, Eddie is also the narrator of the film, and so he's the one that's kind of walking you through the whole thing, giving you like the third person uh, view to kind of give the audience a better sense of what's going on and to kind of guide them along through everything that's happening in the movie. So that was the first step of the three characters, naming their wants, their needs, their whys. So step two of the 11 part story structure is that the main hero, i.e. Maggie, goes to achieve her goal the logical way. And so that logical way was to go into Frankie's gym and ask him to train her. But when he goes in there, he tells her, I do not train girls. And so that leads us to uh, part three, the character is denied. And so after she's denied the initial training session with Frankie, she continues to keep training by herself in the hopes that maybe he'll come around. And that's when step four comes around and uh, that's when, like I said, Eddie, our trainer, he's kind of the catalyst for all of this. He's the one that gives our hero a second chance. Uh, even though Frankie won't train her, Morgan Freeman's character, Eddie, he you know, kind of gives her a couple tips here and there. He explains to her, I'm not a trainer, but I could give you a few tips here and there. And so Eddie starts training her, boom, she's getting a little better. And as she keeps going to the gym, she keeps going to the gym. Frankie sees her, Clint Eastwood's character, and he eventually decides that, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, uh, he decides, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give her a chance. This leads us to step five. And this is the conflicts about taking advantage of the second opportunity. And that leads us to step two, when she is denied by Frankie at the gym because Frankie says he doesn't train girls. He doesn't want to train her. He doesn't want anything to do with her. But even though she's denied, she continues on and continues training. And so that leads us to step four, where the main character gets a second opportunity to achieve their goal. And this is when Eddie comes into play. Eddie is the catalyst, like I said earlier, in getting Frankie and Maggie together to train. Even though Frankie isn't the main trainer, I mean, even though Eddie isn't the main trainer, he's the one that starts off giving her a few tips. And as uh, Frankie continues to see her in the gym day in and day out, he eventually comes around to her and decides that, you know what, I think I'm gonna take the risk and train her. This is a big risk for Frankie because for him, the emotional connection to Maggie, I feel is what he's scared most of. It's, it's kind of like the feeling of falling in love or learning to love someone or something but then you don't wanna put it in a position to where it's hurt or destroyed or something bad happens to it. And uh, that's just something that kind of goes along in boxing and it's something that you see that Frankie struggles with throughout the movie. So this brings us on to part six and seven when our hero goes for it and then all is going well. So when Frankie and Maggie finally get together and start boxing, it's a great team too. It's a, it's a great team. It's like a, the dream team match made in heaven and so maggie eventually starts fighting other women you know she goes and doing his real fights and she's knocking everybody out in the first round and she's so good that eventually frankie has to start paying other people just so they would take fights with her because people didn't want to fight her this leads us to step number eight the fall so this is the one of the big turning parts in the movie, so be careful for the spoiler alert. So Maggie, she's going, she's fighting her and Frankie, the dream team, they're boxing, they're knocking out everybody in the first round, and Maggie makes her way all the way to a title fight in, I think it's England. And when she fights the fighter, the fighter she's fighting is actually considered the dirtiest fighter in the game, Ric Flair, woo! So she goes to fight this player, or not this player, she goes to fight this other boxer and they're going boom, boom, and then all of a sudden, at the end of the round, 
the one thing Frankie always tells Maggie before every fight is always protect yourself, keep your hands up. And what happened was when Maggie went back to turn to her corner, the other fighter came, boom, cheap shot at her from the back. Maggie falls and breaks her neck on a fucking bar stool, the cut man stool. And that just changed the whole pace of the entire movie. It was actually a pretty sad left turn. And that leads us to step nine, and that is the crisis. And so this is when the movie and the story really takes a sharp turn for the better and the worse. So pretty much, so pretty much after breaking her neck, Maggie is now a quadriplegic and has been hospitalized and she'll never be able to move again. And so once this happens, Clint Eastwood or uh, Frankie's character goes into a massive rage, just a frenzy, trying to figure out how she could get her healed, how he can help. And he pretty much is blaming everyone and himself for this tragedy that has happened to Maggie. To him, this was his, his Mokushla, you know, this was his prize fighter, his love, his soul, his spirit. And uh, for her to be a quadriplegic and get hurt while under his watch, in his ring, while she is his fighter, it's a really crushing blow for him if you look at it. Um, for Frankie, he sees it as another failure. Um, it's a really big part of his life. You see him start to emotionally unravel. He's crying to the priest, something he'd never done before. And he's just really having a whole hard time with this entire situation. Imagine building someone up to this champion and then right at that peak moment, boom, everything's wiped away, nothing happens. And so uh, this was a very difficult moment for him and uh, a very emotional moment in the movie. While going through this uh, traumatic experience, Frankie even uh, experiences some of the, uh, the five stages of death where uh, he bargains, he's uh, blaming other people, he's pleading, and it just shows him a different side of him emotionally that we hadn't seen up to this point in the film. And this is what leads us to part 10 and 11. And so this is the climax and the resolution of the story. So while Maggie is in the hospital, she is a quadriplegic. She eventually gets shingles in her left leg and has to lose her leg. But the whole time she's there, Frankie is with her and she is in good spirits. She's doing her best to, you know, be happy, be thankful, be alive. Because even though she is a quadriplegic, she feels that she was able to achieve her goals and live her life to the fullest. And even though she broke her neck and became a quadriplegic, she feels like she was able to achieve those life goals and her life is now complete. And that's what leads us to the resolution. And that is of Maggie wanting to be euthanized by Frankie. And this is a very powerful and emotional moment in the story because before her final fight, Frankie gives Maggie a robe and on the back it says Mo Kushla. And this translates to the pulse of my heart and it means darling and sweetheart. So it's like, darling, you are my sweetheart. Darling, you are the pulse of my heart. And so at this point, Frankie has fully taken Maggie under his wing and he is now one with her. It's not a romantic relationship, but one of true love that you really care for this person and you really want the best for this person. It's a different kind of love. It's not a romantic love, but more of a, a selfless love, kind of like not agape love. There's different types of love. I'm not going to go into that right now, but it's a very selfish love. And he's built a very deep bond with uh, Maggie, somewhat like a daughter to him. It's a way of Frankie being able to have that daughter experience with someone that he never had. And so in the end, Frankie is forced to euthanize Maggie. And after that, the story kind of ends. Uh, Maggie passes on and Frankie actually never returns to the boxing gym. And instead he just, it shows a shot of him at the, uh, it shows a shot of him at a restaurant that him and Maggie ate at before they went to the final fight. And it just kind of shows like a, a resolving peace. It's like his life was kind of over at that point and he was just trying to do his best to just move forward with his life. Uh, he was done boxing and 
it just shows a total transformation of character uh, what I like about this story is that it really doesn't have a happy ending and it's very similar to what we experience in real life uh, so often we are told these stories where you know the guy gets the girl the hero rolls off it's a happy ending but to me what makes this movie special is the reality of it there's no happy ending it's just life and it is what it is and it keeps moving forward like we must so one more time i'm gonna run it down uh, the first thing is the character's wants, needs, and why. The second thing is the character logically goes for it. That's when Maggie asks Frankie to train her. The third step is the character is denied. That's when Frankie refuses to train Maggie. The fourth step is the character gets a second overall opportunity to achieve the goal. And so that's when Maggie comes back and Frankie accepts her as the trainer. Uh, number five is conflicts about taking advantage of a second opportunity. The character goes for it. Boom. She goes and fights the boxing matches. She's doing well. Uh, step seven, all goes well. She's knocking everybody eight. Uh, she's, she's knocking everybody eight. Step seven is she all goes well. She's knocking everyone out. She makes it to the, fight, to the title fight. The uh, eighth step is all things fall apart. She's cheap shotted and breaks her neck on the stool. Step nine, the crisis. She's a quadriplegic, quadriplegic and Frankie is uh, you know trying to find everything to help her out, but he can't. 10, the climax, uh, you know, Frankie has to euthanize her. And then 11 is everyone kind of goes their separate way. It's the resolution. Eddie owns the gym. Uh, Frankie leaves and goes and has pie. You just see him eating pie where him and, him and Maggie had their last dessert together. And then Maggie passes on to the next world. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of shit. But I hope you were able to kind of follow along with it. Damn, these worms. It's just not my day today. But... Thank you for watching. <laughs> Have a good day. Peace. 11 Act Story Structure. Hopefully this shit is cool. <laughs> Peace.